Welcome to Heart Home Community's most recent Baldwinsville Community Update. I'm your host, Shelly Hoffman. We hope you enjoy the show and find it very informative. Hey everybody, it's Shelly Hoffman here with our mayor of this snowy village that we have going on today. <laughs> How are you doing today, Mr. Dick Clark? I'm doing good. I haven't had to go out yet, so that's really good. <laughs> uh, and I, we were talking about who gets the credit or the blame, and uh, I point the finger directly at you because <laughs> I don't want the blame for this. But hopefully, I think it's going to be like 60 something Saturday, so you know it'll be. It'll be warming right up. We're, we're seeing, we're staying warmer longer. And even when it's not warm, it's not bad. This is a kind of a, an anomaly, but um, we, we have lived in central New York for, I mean, I've been here for 74 years. It's not changing. We're going to always have that one little bit of snow in mid to late April. I guess people said we've had it on Mother's Day. I don't really remember. We, we did. We had it last year on Mother's Day because when we moved up here about yeah, ten or ten or more years ago, everyone told Kurt that just so you know, it snows on Mother's Day, and every year Mother's Day came and went, no snow. And then last year it snowed on Mother's Day, and I only remember because he sent him and I texted, and it said, "Oh, they were right, it can't <laughs> snow on Mother's Day." If you wait around here long enough, it'll happen. So, <laughs> how have you been, Shell? You know what? I've been pretty, pretty good. I've started my 2021 project on the house because every year I try and do a, a project. It was, as you know, it was built in 1839. So I'm not going to run out of projects anytime yeah, soon. No, you know, you <laughs> a lot of projects there. And, and I'm sure if your house is like the house I grew up in, every project that you start ends up being more because of the age of the house. You think, yeah. oh, we can put this here. Well, yeah, but the things that are holding that there aren't going to last much longer. So you got to fix something else. So, we call it uh, creative construction is what we're calling it. Oh, look go. at this creative construction that we came across. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, my father used to say, nothing but wood butchers. Then they, <laughs> we had a thing in our kitchen that where a, a post went diagonally. In, in the, so when you would try to nail things into the wall, sometimes you would hit a stud, sometimes you wouldn't, and you'd hit where you thought you wouldn't hit a stud. And then when we had take some of the sheetrock off or the plaster, actually, yes. you could see that they had taken a plank and just put it sideways. And, and you know, my father's, I've never seen that one before, but I suppose if I live long enough around this house, I'll see a lot of things I've never seen before. <laughs> so. That's, that is true. I will say I was going to extend, um, cause I want a year round bathroom out on my back porch because the downstairs bathroom I have, I give to the Airbnb guests. So when someone's staying, we lose that bathroom. But um, so I was just going to make this big bathroom. But uh, Matthew, who's helping me at the house with this particular project, we're, we're looking into putting a sauna out there because I oh, thought yeah. for, you know, for a guest and stuff, it would be nice to throw out there that there's actually a sauna on property. So we'll see how this goes. I think you could take that school fence and just push it back and you have to pick up more property. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, we'll you, see. Can really, you can really build back there. Well, this is part of the house. This is on the porch. So okay. you have to come into the house. So you jump out of the cold pool because I'm not doing a heater because I found out the cost of running electric out there. So oh. instead of <laughs> cold pool, hot sauna, right? We'll, we'll see how it there works. You there you go. <laughs> um, I wanted to take a second. Um, the police department was recognizing uh, their two dispatchers on uh, Administrative Professionals Day. And uh, Dick Long and Luann St. Germain, who uh, who Mike Lefinchek would probably uh, be quite honest and tell you they, they run the police department, sort of. Probably. I mean, you know, everything goes through them, it seems like. You know, they're, they're the voices that you hear when you call. And they're the face you see when you stop by if you have to get an accident report or if you're looking for questions from the police. They're the people that answer the, the, uh, the call at the door. And uh, they're they're terrific. They do a great. They represent the village so well. And uh, so hats off to uh, Luann and Dick. Um, I've known Dick Long. Uh, that's Bill's younger brother who who runs Multi Med. And uh, Dick and I have been friends since he was you know five six years old. Um, we were roommates for a while. We rented went in on renting a farmhouse together. Him him and I and another guy. And. Uh, and Luann has been here with us for a while, um, and uh, she's also a village trustee in North Syracuse. So, you know, very well-rounded. And uh, and when you call her, 
I'm sure if you're in distress and you get Luann on the phone, everything would calm down quickly because she's such a soothing voice. And we're very fortunate. Um, and I just take a moment to, particularly through the pandemic, how well they represented us, but, but the other people um, in the offices that, that they're the face, you know, people will say, oh, your village is running good. It's like, well, not because of me necessarily. You know, you're talking about Village Hall, you have Mo Butler, Jody DePaulis, Anna Custer, Mary Augustus, um, in the courts, Cheryl Adsit, Deb Saldo, up at DPW, Louise Corrigan. You've got Ruth Troy uh, and Joni Versler and Nancy Sullivan over at the Senior Center. And they're the ones that all through the pandemic answered the phones. Maybe they would call me and say, somebody's got an issue, can you call them? Uh, but they kept things running. And uh, usually in the spring, there's another date that comes up that's, uh, oh, I don't know if it's called Office Employees Day or Village. Administrative Assistant Day, maybe? Yeah, no. No, it's, it's more specific to like um, village, you know, people. Oh. And I, always, I for several times I've treated them to lunch. You know, I take an order like the day before, and then we order from one of the local restaurants, and then we get together in my office and have lunch, and and just get a chance to thank them for for all they do. Because again, it, my position is part time. Um, I'm not in the office, even when it's not a pandemic. I'm not in the office five days a week, uh, but they are, and they're the ones that get the people call up screaming and yelling. You know, why did you leave? Why didn't you pick up my leaves? Or you know, why is somebody putting a sidewalk across my yard? Um, those kind of things. Uh, and by the time I get to talk to the people, they've been soothed a little bit. Maybe they they didn't get their questions totally answered because, you know, you got a, somebody answering the phone who doesn't even know what they're really talking about. But they handle people so well that by the time I get them, I can explain things. And it's, it's usually very well done. Um, I wanted to give a hats off to... Uh, to Chuck McAuliffe, um, he's running our DPW, and this past week we finished up. I think yes, maybe, maybe Monday. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> on Monday we finished up the sidewalks on Curtis Ave, and there were some people on Facebook noticing the sidewalks and saying how great it is. Yeah. I mean, we, we put quite a few sidewalks in in a very short amount of time. Um, we were lucky we got them early before they had a lot of other work to do. So they came right in, and uh, some of them have been. Um, sidewalks that we've been hoping to get in for a while over by uh, Ken's Collision. We put a sidewalk across there, and that's a place where people catch the bus a lot. And where they catch the bus was like all mud. Now there's a nice sidewalk to stand on as they wait for the bus. Um, this going up uh, what we call Point Park up on the corner of um, East Oneida and East Genesee Street, where we, uh, you know, it's a beautiful little park as you come in from Budweiser. We completed that sidewalk all the way down to uh, the first intersection. Uh, and so now, at least for the time being, people in, in Aspen Springs could come down to Route 31 and cross over and have a sidewalk, take them all the way down to Burn Dairy in that area. So that very pleased with that. Um, it's always nice. You know, it's a little rough sometimes because some people don't see the value of sidewalks. Nobody ever walks across there. Well, no, because there's not a sidewalk. That's why. But now that there's a sidewalk, I, I remember on, uh, I believe it's Spruce Street, um, I was out walking one night um, with my sister, Cindy, and a woman was walking her little dog. And I said, uh, how do you enjoy your new sidewalk? Oh, my gosh. She said, I, I didn't want it. I said, why would I need a sidewalk? And now I love it because I can walk my dog up and down the sidewalk and don't have to go on the road and walk. Uh, it's so nice. And I never, never thought it would be. So um, we, we get that reaction more than, than people would think. We um, did have a question last week when you were talking about sidewalks and I'm going to apologize in advance because I, I walk past all the time and I can't think of what church it is, but it's right behind the high school. But, you know, again, my kids, I think Matt Hunt had the question so you walk on the sidewalk, then you walk. There's no sidewalk in front of the church. So you either cut down, walk the church parking lot, which they may or may not like, or you walk the street. Is there any plans or is there a reason there's not a sidewalk there? Well, we have we have talked with the church, um, you know, partnering them because the projects always are a 50-50 split between the landowner 
and the village. Um, that's a pretty big strip and it's on a hill. It was a little concerning to, to some of the people that were looking at it as to how they would actually do it, whether they it would go lower and then come up or that they'd have to take some trees out. So it's always, every time we've gotten to it, it's, it's kind of been a log jam of what are we going to do? How would we handle it the right way? So that's probably next on our agenda, that and the strip between Curtis Ave and Aspen Springs. Okay. So it's on our radar it, and in, because I, I live in Candlewick and I used to walk that strip a lot. I still try to occasionally. Um, and you do end up walking on the shoulder of the road to cars coming over the Oswego Street Hill. And it's, you know, it's not exactly ideal. Um, but I know Steve D'Arcangelo uh, had tried to figure out the best way to do it. It was going to be retaining walls, holding dirt back because the sidewalk was going to have to be lower. And it was, you know, the expense of it versus what else we could get done with that that grant, that bond. Uh, we could spread it a lot more places in the village than just that one. So that'll be coming up. That that might be in our next one. And then we would be pretty close to to being done. I mean, it got mentioned the other day that we might have to look at Canton Street um, going out because there's a, there are more and more houses. We do have it on the what would be the west side of Canton Street on the, where the senior center is. There are, there are sidewalks that go up to McCary town, yeah. but there are a lot of houses on the other side of the street too, that would find that they might walk into the village if they didn't have to walk in the street. So um, it's a very, uh, we, we look at it as what it produces for people. We don't just want to put a sidewalk to say we've got a ribbon of sidewalk, but um, people with little kids that are learning to ride bicycles. Isn't it nice that they have a sidewalk and they don't have to be in the road learning how to ride a bike? Um, and so uh, a lot of thought does go into it. And, and this year we were lucky. Uh, Chuck worked with the uh, contractor and they just whisked right through. I heard the brush truck go by a little while ago. Um, we were late this week because what happened in uh, our code is that the sidewalk will go through a driveway because that way we control the walking surface. Um, so you're walking along on a nice sidewalk, you don't suddenly get onto a slippery tarvia type of thing. And when you do that, sometimes you leave a, a ledge um, between the old the driveway and the sidewalk and it's, it's hard for cars to get through. So our guys are going around with blacktop and fixing it so that the, the sidewalk and the driveway are a similar surface. Okay. Uh, and so Chuck said he thought it would be time better spent getting that taken care of for homeowners and, and push the brush back. So instead of Monday, we went to Wednesday. And, and so people should see their brush getting picked up today and tomorrow. I know it's a lot on our street. People are really taking advantage that we've had a little break in the weather and uh, getting out and raking some of the dead vines that they didn't get in the fall and that type of stuff. And, and, I mowed, um, I've had a neighbor mow twice now. So, you know, the mowing process is, is, uh, well underway. And so we get a lot, a lot of people put their mowing out at the road. I, I use a mulch mower, so it just goes right back in the grass. But, uh, you know, that's one of those things that I'm sure they probably got a phone call or two this week wanting to know where the brush pickup trucks were because some people do plan it. You know, so on Sunday they get the brush out, which is what ideal. That's what we would like them to do. And then when they don't come, they get disappointed and angry, hostile. No. <laughs> Maybe frustrated is a better word. How's that? <laughs> there you go. Um, quite a few things going on. Um, court opened up last week. I asked Cheryl Adsit how things went. She said it, it went well. They only had 12 people um, because that's how they wanted to start limited and they're hoping to increase it each session. So it's, I think the second, third and fourth Wednesday of every month at four o'clock is court. Um, Cheryl advises that if you get a ticket, it, you can appear in person on the date that's on the ticket, or you can call the court at 635-6355 and set up a time that works better for you. Uh, so don't just wander in, at any time, uh, any date, it really helps them to have it organized because they're not gonna let you in the building. The door stays locked, they let in one at a time. 
Um, and hopefully at some point we'll get back to normal court, but it's just working pretty well. And they've been pretty, they were pleased back in the uh, fall when they were able to do this and it went well, people responded. And so it's nice to see, you know, people able to get their tickets taken care of. Um, we are currently working on, um, with a lead from trustee Megan O'Donnell, um, we've had a lot of requests to use Paper Mill Island for things other than concerts. Um, and we don't, we've not had a rental policy. What we've told people in the past is church on the island, eight o'clock in the morning. I don't think there's going to be much competition rather than sign up and have to pay a fee. Why don't you just go as if it's a park and go. Um, so they've been doing that. Well, now people are talking about maybe uh, dance recitals because it, their building's too small to house, to get the parents in to watch. So maybe we could use Paper Mill Island. Well, that certainly is not something you want to schedule for five o'clock and get out there and find out that there's a Frisbee, you know, right. competition going on amongst some of the local kids who, who probably would be fine if you said, geez, we've got this going on. Could you do this another time? But now they can, they'll be able to sign it up reserve it so there'll be a probably a small fee and we always have a uh, security deposit for any damage that's done and there's a, a trash pickup fee uh, depending on the event there may not need to be a trash pickup you know when I think when Zumba goes out there they take a shot and that nobody will be there and they, they have not paid for any of that stuff and, and that works fine but I think we're going to try like we do now I think you have to pay for I don't know if it's 30 bucks or something for a pavilion at Mercer Park. Um, so if you sign up that, you would also sign up the stage over at the amphitheater. And uh, But I think uh, Megan was talking about trying to work with, with Mo Butler and the two of them, could she thought, could hash out a pretty good plan. It wouldn't take a whole long time. But it's nice to know that people view that as something other than just a concert venue. Yeah. Um, the chief and I sat down on the phone yesterday and talked about doing some things. Um, he agreed with me that we could open the visitor center. I called Lauren and told her that was a go. Um, what we'll do so people know is we will maybe take some of like crime scene tape type of thing and tape, tape off the building so that the only person who goes in the building will be the, the volunteer. Can it not be crime scene tape though? Can it just be? <laughs> I don't know if we have any other kind of tape. Maybe, maybe we do. Maybe we'll put up some of that orange fencing or something at the end. Um, and that way the volunteers can be protected. You know, we'll have a sign up, you know, please have a mask on when you approach the volunteer and keep a distance. Um, they'll probably, the volunteers will probably have to sign a release, to, you know, to go there. Um, we'll make sure that there's hand sanitizer available and that type of stuff. And, uh, we'll have porta potties as usual, just going to uh, trying to come up with a system for cleaning them. Um, but that's good to know that the visitor center will open. That usually opens like for Memorial day and through the summer. And again, it's much like I was talking earlier about our people in the offices. It's, these are the first faces that visitors on boats see when they come to Baldwinsville, they tie up. They say, oh, a visitor said, oh, look, there's somebody there. They walk up and somebody said, what can I do to help you? Right. And they say, isn't Baldwinsville a wonderful place? And and we we get letters every year. The people that we dealt with there were just the nicest people. They gave us, we told them we wanted a steak. We wanted Italian. We wanted this kind of dinner. They gave us their recommendations on places to eat. It was perfect. We needed a drugstore. They told us where we could find a drugstore you're so lucky to have these people. And I, I think they probably think they get paid because they are so good. Uh, but it's, it's something that the chamber of commerce runs. They get the volunteers. And I told Lauren to go ahead and, you know, get cracking. I think she will get together probably with Chuck McCall to go look at the visitor center and see if there's anything else that needs to be done to get it ready. And we'll be rocking and rolling. Yeah, she was excited. She brought me some coffee this morning and was telling me that you had reached out to her. So she was excited to get that going. Lauren, excited? <laughs> Hard to believe. I know. A little energy She's coming excited. out of that girl. <laughs> excited is like drive on her car. You know, she's pushing and excited when she wakes up in the morning. She's, you know, 
people like that are good. You and her and and uh, your other cohort. I can't. Mandy. <laughs> you know, people like that bring smiles to people. That, that we we don't get enough of that in this world. Um, so anybody can make me smile. I I am a big fan of. Me too. Um, we, did, we did talk about the parade. Um, we haven't ruled it out yet for Memorial Day. Um, I did tell the chief that I, I, some, one of the mayor, I think the mayor of Liverpool was trying to get a feel for what other people were doing. So they sent out a, a mass questionnaire to all the uh, mayors. And four of them said they were going to try to have a parade. Others had said we won't have a parade, but we will have a memorial service um, with the veterans organizations and stuff. We did that last year. We would. That's the least we would do this year. Would be to have a memorial service where we would go to. There's a place at the post office uh, on the bridge. We throw flowers into the river. Yeah. We go to St. Mary's Cemetery and then Riverside. Um, we would at least do that with with the two uh, veterans groups. And if I think that the chief thinks that there's a way we can do it, we might try. It. Now these people all said we're going to have we're going to have a parade, but it's going to be on a smaller scale. I said, I'm not sure that a smaller scale parade means smaller crowd. I mean, if people hear there's a parade, We're if, coming. if it only lasts two blocks, there's still going to be 800 people on the sidewalk. Now, who's going to go along and say you need some space between your families? I mean, you know, we, that's really kind of out of the question. So we'll see what, what that brings. I'm not, I don't want to promise anybody anything, but we are at least still looking at it. Farmer's market. Um, Chief thought that there certainly were ways to make that work um, based on what the regional market does. Um, softball, still waiting for a little bit of a guideline from the county, but I'm going to tell Mo to let the softball people know that it uh, looks like they'll be able to be able to go. We had talked about, so, about concerts. Um, somebody said to me the other day, well, one of the, I don't know if it's Beacon Skiff or one of the Orchards is having a concert. They've got the for Teshi Trucks Band, uh, which is, you know, kind of a cult, got a cult following. And certainly in this area, a lot of people like them. How come they can have them and you can't have it on the island? I said, well, first of all, that's a private entity versus a municipal facility where we have, we're held to higher standards. Yes. And, um, you know, they, they can just bring in, they have staff that maybe will, I know that they're talking about doing family pods, you know, which is like a hula hoop a little bigger than a hula hoop and you can get four or five people in that pod. If you get up to go get something to drink or go to a bathroom, you have to wear your mask. Otherwise you don't, but you have to have people to enforce all that stuff. And we don't, we don't have that kind of staff in the village to do that. We would re have to rely on the promoter. And at this point, he's not excited about trying to come up with a way to do that. Um, I think he thinks it would be require an awful lot of people and, uh, and maybe if he sees some other planning going on, uh, other people doing it, he might say, well, if they could do it, maybe we can try to do it. So, but he has said that he's not ruling it out um, maybe for mid to late July, starting with a few concerts and working more in in August. And, and again, he'll have a clearer picture. And, and he said some of the problem is that some of the bands that he normally gets are slow to sign up because they don't want to get all booked up and then find out it's all going to fall through and they could have gone to another place. So they're all iffy, wishy-washy. So we'll see. Uh, but, but things are starting to happen. Um, Ruth Troy reminds me that they have resumed um, with the, with the, uh, the guidance and leadership from the Office of Aging from the county to go to a limited indoor small group activity schedule. And it's going to be the same things that they had before, the fall prevention, Tai Chi, the book club, the art group, and bingo. Now, this is a deal you have to call in advance. Don't just show up at the time you know there's an event going on. You've got to call and get signed up so, because they're only going to let a certain number of people, and it's relatively small. Um, so you want to get on the list. You call the center at 638-4536. Um, they will require you to wear masks. And um, I think they're doing a check at the door with, you know, check your temperature. And they're going to ask you to sign a sheet that you've not been out of the state and that type of stuff. Uh, but it's but it's a chance to get people back in. And if that's working and the, the state and county 
guidance is for more people that can be in the building, then more things will start to happen. And that, that's a good sign. Um, there's a few new things on the list at the senior center. Um, the big one for me, it gets me kind of excited. I don't know if you are familiar with George Leia. But oh, yeah. He's a singer. I just him and his guitar. And he sings, you know, Paul Simon. He sings John Denver. He sings Garth Brooks. He came in the fall, didn't he, to the, the senior yes. center? Yep. And they taped it and had it on Peck B. And um, George is a local guy who can sing just about anything. He does Neil Diamond. He does, you know, all, all the... Uh, the singers that, as soon as you hear their name, you say, "Oh, sure, I know that. Guy. They're great." Well, he's he's very good, and he sits up in the gazebo, and everybody has to, you know, bring a lawn chair. You have to wear a mask, spread out, keep social distanced. But there's plenty of room to do that. And the fall when they did it, it was a pretty good crowd, but it was so spread out that you didn't really realize how many people were there. Um, so that, that's on May thirteenth at two o'clock with a rain date, May 20th, a week later. Um, so that's the first concert. When it says first concert, that assumes there's going to be more. I like that. Nice going, Ruth Troy. <laughs> um, so that's kind of like a date. Maybe everybody will exhale and say, wow, we can go out and sit there and wave to Joni and Martha and Freddie and people we haven't seen in a long time. And, uh, so mark that on your calendars, May 13th, and we'll remind you again before then. Um, they're going to have a virtual elder law fair. Um, it's free, open to all. First session's May 6th. Call the center so you can get registered and find out how that will work. Uh, but the, the Volunteer Lawyers Project of Onondaga County will be presenting it so that if, you know, if you're sitting at home and you're festering because the neighbor's doing something that you're not sure is legal, with your yard or somebody has approached you and you think it might be a scam, good people to talk to. Um, the Office for Aging is also doing a Zoom nutrition session. Um, again, call the center, It'll be on May 13th and May 19th. So good information on things that you can eat, you know, to, you know, you're at home, you've been inside, you, you maybe put on a couple pounds and you're looking for something healthy to eat. This is new. Nutrition for older people, because obviously your systems slow down as you get older, and uh, it keeps you linked up. That's the kind of stuff that they would normally have at the senior center, and people would come. Um, and again, the hard part is is we we have people that don't have access to Zoom because they don't have a laptop like I have to do it. But if enough people uh, speak up, uh, if they have if they have smartphones, they can do Zoom off their smartphone. You don't get necessarily see everybody else that's involved, but uh, call the senior center and they'll do everything they can to try to help you. Okay. Uh, there's the mammography van May 11th will be at the senior center. You've got to make appointments. Um, the walking every Monday morning at 930. Down memory lane may be taking a little vacation. We may have, we had one yesterday. We only had one other uh, we had two sisters uh, on with us, the, uh, Toots and Gwen uh, were on with us, with Linda and I. Great time, 45 minutes of t just talking about books we've read, you know, when we were kids and, and, and just, it always evolves into nothing that was scheduled, just talking yeah. about some memories growing up and that kind of stuff. Well, because of the weather getting nice, we may do it again in May. I'll, I'll tell Ruth what the date is and so she can let everybody know. And then for the summer, we'll just take a, a break. It's uh, it, it's harder in the summer. It's, I know I get outside mowing the lawn and working in the garden, and all of a sudden you look up and it's 5.30. What happened at 4 o'clock? I forgot we had a Zoom thing. Um, so And other people will be out and about, I'm sure, because of the nice weather. So we'll probably take a break for uh, – June, July, and August, and come back in September. Um, trying to see if there was anything else that I had marked. Oh, we're still looking for summer help. I know we've had a couple people inquire. We need people um, that would do primarily lawn mowing, but there would be some other work to be done. Um, we just rehired our uh, senior, I forget what Steve 
Dark Angel always call it on the budget, lawn height maintainer or something. <laughs> but Chip Hembolt, who's been with us for several years, and, uh, you know, he just comes in with, with no orders. He just knows he's got the whole village mapped out on a whole plan to do. He goes, this park, that park, this place, this place. And he's we just let him go uh, because he knows. And we'll hire a couple people to work with him mowing. Uh, but there will be some other work. And we still are looking for commitment from anybody who would like to take care of our flowers. Uh, that is not as easy a job as it looks. It's 20 hours a week. And I know uh, Mary Augustus did it one year. My sister Cindy did it. And they'll both tell you that it's exhausting because you're out there and it's very hot and you're down on your hands and knees. And, you know, yeah, it's harder than people think because we have a lot more flowers than people think. And we, we kind of want them, if we're going to put flowers in, we want them to look good, not wilt and, you know, it, it, it takes some effort. I did see a pot, what looks like a positive note on graduations that the state is talking about allowing in-person graduations, but they may limit the number, which for big schools might mean two or three shifts. You know, the A through G have graduation at one, H through whatever comes in at, at uh, three and then the last group comes in at five that way parents can come and maybe it may be two people per family which is always difficult with you know split families uh grandparents that kind of stuff but it's better than than what they had to go last year was everybody was in a car yeah they drove up and got their diploma and you know walk they walked through but the families kind of drove their car through as the kid was walking through and it was actually quite interesting. I, I, you know, we had a granddaughter graduate and, and so we were paying a lot of attention to it. And, uh, you know, I, I think that while it wasn't what they were looking for, at some point in time, they may look back and go, you know, we had the most unique graduation of anybody ever in Baldwinsville. You know, that was, we're the only ones that can say we did that. So <laughs> that well, may be special. I got to you know. tell you the conversation in my house is Taylor, the middle child is never the first at anything. And so my, my son did not do it. Jordan's not much of a unique personality. So his graduation was just, I listened to it from my backyard. But my daughter says she gets to be the first Hoffman to walk across the stage at Baker because her brother didn't do it. <laughs> if you look for the positive. That's like, what we do. It's easier. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was one other thing I was going to mention. I just don't see a note on it. So I'm, I can't remember it. Um. Well, I have probably enough for everybody to digest. Uh, please. I have a question for you. Go ahead. Why do you have a, every time I'm looking at you, I keep looking at uh, the, the head behind you. I'm assuming it's um, our what? Syracuse. Yes. Bad? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, basketball is over. I, I miss seeing Jim on television. So I thought we would include him so other people could get a look at the smiling coach. Um, him and my, my little basketball guy I got one year when I was coaching one of the parents made it yeah uh, so I just thought I don't know how much people pay attention but now I know somebody does wow. and Lauren just chimed in she goes I was going to ask about the gym head <laughs> so <laughs> I, I cannot tell you in, in the screen right when you're zooming it's always what's behind you what people see and I keep looking at you but my eyes keep going to gym <laughs> <laughs> well story of my life <laughs> I'm second best to Jim Van. <laughs> I guess that's not so bad, you know. No. Generally pretty popular. Um, again, if we're, we're, we just go back to the thing that I've, I've been saying for a year. If, if there's questions, if you have issues, call. If it's a village, something in the village, call the village clerk's office, and they'll direct you to the right person. If you're a senior, make sure you call the senior center. If you have problems with your TV thing, call Shelly, <laughs> and if you want to, if you want to pep me up, call Lauren. She's, she will do uh, it. She's so positive, and um, I, I, I think she'll be great in that new job with the chamber. I think yeah. people are going to love having her bouncing around, and uh, um, it's you know, it makes me feel good. I see the things again. I keep hearing people talking about the the Chowder Fest, and you know how that went, and uh, you know. 
I'm sure that the restaurants are not happy looking out and seeing that stuff. No, probably not. Because probably the not. had their tables out for people to sit outside. Now they're looking at snow. Uh, but, you know, it won't be long before we're every day is 65 to 70 at least. And uh, some of the outside stuff can pick up. But uh, uh, I would stop down to uh, Beagle Supply yesterday. And I, I call on the phone and order. And then they just come out and put it right in the vehicle. And uh, talking to Jason, who is the son of the owner. And uh, I said, how's business? He said, it's going great. He said, people must be like you getting their stuff early. A lot of people are buying topsoil and garden soil and, and all kinds of stuff because they've got, they're, they're at home more. And last year was kind of a novelty as far as, you know, some people still worked for a while before they were, so, okay, you need to start working at home. And uh, so the, the April was kind of lost in the shuffle. But now people are saying, I'm home. You know, I'm home. Normally I got home at six o'clock. Now I'm done working at four o'clock. I'm going to go out and get the yard ready. So that's why I've got some garden soil for my vegetable garden. I want to get that worked in. And uh, I'm going to start some tomato plants. And uh, so, you know, nice to see, hear him say that people have been supporting the business and, and uh, he's a great ambassador. I mean, it's, we really, we really appreciate your support. You know, I thought, and I hear him say it to everybody. So it makes you feel good. You know, they know that you, you recognize the local business and they recognize that you do. So support your local businesses as much as you can. Um, it's easy because they're good businesses. You know, Ace Hardware, Beville Supply have a lot of the same stuff. Both have some different stuff. The restaurants, we've got what a great variety. Um, get out and do your thing. Yes. And especially this weekend when it gets warm again. Not not so much today, but <laughs> right. Don't well, thank you, Mayor. As, as always, uh, you know, every week we say, I don't know what we're gonna talk about next week. What could there possibly be going on? But there's always something going on in Baldwinsville. So I, I wore this shirt because yesterday when I got done it at the uh, at Beaver Supplies, I was coming back up a night of street. I said, I was gonna swing through the school and see what, you know, if there's anybody out and around. Yeah. And there was baseball players practicing. There were tennis players practicing. There were lacrosse players, yes. uh, football players. And I thought, you know, I had goosebumps because it was so good to see the kids out doing things. I said, well, I'm going to wear this today in support of all our Beville sports teams. And uh, I'm sure they're excited. You know, last spring was just a wipeout of sports. Yeah. And uh, now they're back doing it. And, uh, it's nice for me because I live close enough that I can go on a nice walk on a, a spring day, watch two innings of baseball, swing over and watch, you know, a quarter of lacrosse, head over and watch a little JV baseball for an inning and then back home and, you know, feel like I was out and doing a lot of stuff. So take advantage of the fact that you got free entertainment. I live <laughs> all across the streets, a JV softball player. She's really good. And I can't wait to get a chance to watch her play. Um, Spring is sprung. The yes. grass is riz. I wonder where the flowers is. That, that was my, my father used to say that when I was a little guy. I never forgot it. I didn't know what he was talking about in the beginning. He, my father was not a book smart type of guy, but he could remember things, old songs, old sayings, people. Then he got to where it was, oh, you remember who I'm talking about. You know, he couldn't remember the name at all. But uh, he had a lot of interest. Some things I will not repeat. <laughs> uh, but but he was a good teacher. And my mother was my my mother. I get excited at Memorial Day when they do the uh, oh Flanders Field. They always read that or recite it. Well, my mother was the I think she was the salutatorian for her class, 1939. So in 38 she got to do Flanders Field and she knew it by heart because they, that they did that stuff in school. You learn, you know, like the preamble to the constitution, you learn, you remembered that stuff. Right. Um, and so she did it from memory. And uh, some year I'm going to try, I, I, I'll never be able to remember it, but I'll, I would try, I'd like to read it 
at Memorial Day. And because uh, they always pick kids to do it. Maybe I can convince them one year to let an old timer do it in memory <laughs> of his mother. But she did it as, as a junior, 1938. And uh, all of a sudden she would do, start reciting that, you know, you know, a boom and autumn may his tribe increase, awoke one night from a deep seated sleep. I don't know where that goes after that, but I could remember she could recite the whole thing. So I, I'm losing it. <laughs> I love talking to you, so I don't think you're losing it at all. Or if you are, I'm losing it with you. So okay, it's, that's at least it's fine. It, there's misery uh, loves company. <laughs> True. <laughs> Oh, shoot. All right. Well, on that note, I guess we will uh, call it a day today, but I look forward to talking to you next week and see where on earth that conversation takes us. <laughs> we never know. I we have no idea. <laughs> see you later, Mayor. Bye.